Good morning, Drusilla. Thank you. Oh, nothing for you. I apologize. Yes, one. From my aunt. Theodora the Hermit of Hammersmith. Yes. She's well, I trust. No. You really must persuade her to come down and spend a weekend here. It can't be good for her being shut up like Could I have tomorrow off instead of Saturday? Of course. She wants to see me. Well, I don't need the car. John can drive you. No. Or drive yourself. No. I mean, I'd rather go by train. Would you excuse me? True, <laughs> my dear. How good of you to come. This really has made my day. You asked me to. Did I? In your letter. Yes, I could hardly hope. <laughs> well, well, well. How's the tea? It's ghastly. <laughs> Better than the stuff they gave us in there, no doubt. Oh, my dear, I wonder if I could trouble you. Happy tea? Thank you so much. Half an hour. Lovely to see you again. I can't tell you how lovely. How long is it? You know as well as I do. <laughs> By Jove, yes. Used to look forward to your visits. Red letter days. Only thing that kept me sane. By the way, have you all got the day off? Yes. Well, um, how about going up west for lunch? Big celebration. Play the Savoy Grill? Can you afford it? Oh, yes, rather. Plenty tucked away, no worry about that. Oh, by the way, did I tell you something about me? What? The governor went to the same school as me. Yes, you told me. Yes, but I didn't tell you what he said to me this morning. He said, remember from whence you come, and I trust I shall never see you again. So I said, oh, won't you be going to the old boy's dinner? Cup of tea. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Anna. Oh, we're uh, talking of old boys. Um, how's your employer? He's very well. Come on to my chapter, yes? Not yet. All the notes ready, everything prepared. I told you. Tell the world what a shocker I am. Yes. Oh, poor dear. Must be rotten for you reading all the gory details. I didn't enjoy it. But you enjoy your work, apart from that. Very much. And he uh, likes you? Fond of you? He's very kind to me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just wanted to be sure you were happy in your work. And, uh, you? Work? Mm. Oh, of course. I should be going straight. Will you? Oh, yes. And I know exactly where I'll be going straight to. What do we drink to? Your aunt's recovery? Thank you. She's much better. Really, almost radiant. So are you, if I may make so bold. Yes, I am feeling a lot happier. Theodora, the radiant recluse. Will she come and shine on us? Oh, I'm afraid she can't. She's going to Australia. Good heaven. She wants to get away. For a cruise? Forever. Jeffrey Travers. <laughs> Colonel Travers, actually. Oh, really? Well, I never know whether to use my rank or not these days. Oh, well, I'll put it in and damn the consequences. Well, why not, sir? <laughs> uh, any idea how long you'll be staying, sir? Oh, a couple of weeks, maybe longer. Maybe forever, if that's all right by you. <laughs> the longer, the better. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of looking for a house down here, using this as my base till I find something suitable. 
you know any estate agents? Oh, yes, I know them all. Good. I don't want to do, get anything too expensive, you know. don't want to go beyond, what, 10, 15,000? Uh, no, I don't use them, thank you. A drink. Oh, thank you kindly. Afraid I'm a Scotch man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dear, I wonder if I could trouble you with two large Scotch. Two large Scotch, right, sir? I gather there's an old friend of mine living down here. I must look it up. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, splendid chap. Lost track of him years ago. You know how things happen. One of our regulars, a fellow by the name of Charles Rose. Lieutenant Colonel G.C. Travers, DSO, M.C., 17th, 21st, Lancers. <laughs> and looking, if I may say so, all that that implies. I'm sure him in at once. I never got beyond Major myself. I can hardly keep a colonel waiting. Sir. Particularly a beribboned lancer. Yes, sir. <laughs> Colonel Travers, sir. My dear Charles, after all these years. Seven, I think. Uh, less remission. No hard feelings. Only on my side. Colonel Travers. My real name, actually. Your real name is Edgeworth. You were a captain in the artillery until you got yourself cashiered for embezzling the regimental fund. Oh, my, my. What a memory you've got. Yes. I don't know how you do it. Wish I could. We have different talents. Yours was for preying on wealthy widows and gullible orphans. After all, I did pay for it in the end. Seven years. Well, lucky I wasn't the judge. Well, learnt my lesson. Had time to think about it. Given up all that sort of thing. You've hardly had time to get started again. No promise, you. Left all that behind. I'll believe it when I see it. Well, you know how it is, Charles. I've very little choice in the matter. After all, I'm getting too old for the wandering life, and what wealthy widow is going to look twice at me these days? Tongue as glib as ever. I'm afraid I can't help the way I talk. Second nature to me now. Besides, it might help me find a job. If there's anything a man of my age can do. Retire? Yes, I might do that. After all, I've got plenty in the bank. From your ill-gotten gains? Well, from this and that, you know, investments and so on. As a matter of fact, I had thought of putting some of it into property. Years since I had a house of my own, and I gather property is still going up. What do you think? Captain Edgeworth, Colonel Travers, whatever your name is, and you've had a number of them in your time. <laughs> You're right, You're well. exactly the type of criminal that I most dislike, and I have no reason to believe that you care for me. So why have you come here? It certainly isn't to ask my advice about property. Yeah, but it is. What? Just that. You see, I'm thinking of settling down here, in your village. Why? And uh, don't tell me it's the prettiest spot in the Thames Valley. No, 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 nothing to do with the sea. Man. To do with me, then? Incidentally. Why here? Well, I must have been near Drusilla. Uh, by the way, is she around the house? She's shopping. Oh, I do hope I don't miss her. So there'll be plenty of other opportunities. Uh, by the way, is she satisfactory um, in her job? Yes. You know I sent her along for it. Sent her? Oh, yes. The news went white wildfire around the prison that you were retiring, writing your memoirs. So I thought you'd be needing a first-class secretary. So I wrote to Drusilla. Splendid opportunity for you, I said. And you're like him. You'll get on well with him. And I gather she does. I did not know that there was any connection between Miss Lamb and yourself. Good heavens, hasn't she told you? I'm her father. Good shopping. Oh, they really must get a new stock. If I've told them once, I've told them a thousand oh, times. I hate carbon paper all curled up at the edges. Where is he? Special message. Not to be disturbed. <coughs> Asleep. Conference. Who with? Military secret. <laughs> Cup of tea in the kitchen. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Brown bread, strawberry jam, homemade Swiss roll. Military. The message was simply to ask you not to go in. No reason given. I cannot see any good reason. But I what? told you, I do it. Hello, Drew, my dear. Well, you see, here I am again, like the bad hateney. How dare you!
drink's time. Drink? No, thank you. Song? Funny story? Something to um, cheer you up? No. With not even a thank you. Message from Drusilla, here and after referred to as Miss Lamb. You've spoken to her? Muffled conversation through the bedroom door. She'll be down in a minute. She didn't want a song either. I've never been so shattered in my life. Mm. Different with me. You knew all about me, if not more than all. John, what are we going to do? I suppose my father told you that I applied for this job at his suggestion. Yes. It's perfectly true. And I thought I might find out about him from that file you're reading. I know I should have told you he was my father, but I hadn't told you in the first place, and then it became more and more impossible. And obviously, I thought you'd never find out. I thought he'd just come out of prison and, and go off to Australia or somewhere, and I'd never see him again. He told me he was going to Australia. I suppose I should have guessed that he wouldn't tell me the truth. Anyway, I've behaved like a fool, and I've let you down. And I'm very sorry. Well, I don't know what you're going to do. I just know about me. Don't. Don't what? Don't kiss me. I've always wanted to, and this is as good a time as any. Your turn to do something. You don't have to do anything at all. Just find yourself a new secretary. Do something. Do you know where my father is? He's staying at the pub. Well, then I'll go and see him. And I'll tell him that if he wants to follow me around, this is not the place, because I'm leaving. I have packed my bags already, and I'll leave first thing in the morning. Tell her she doesn't have to. Of course I have to. Look, supposing I stay here and he does too. Oh, he won't tell anyone I'm his daughter. He'll just save it up as a weapon against you. And if you ever threaten to tell anyone that he is a fraud and a swindler and a con man, he will threaten to tell the world that his darling daughter is your secretary. That's it, isn't it? That is certainly what he implies. He's trading on the fact that you like me, if it is a fact. And so the only thing is for me to leave. No, thank you. At last. He's expiated his crimes. He may never commit another. I've read the file. For all we what know. What are you going to do if he takes up with some rich old widow? Or gets made treasurer of the British Legion? He has not yet done so. No, but if he does. Then I myself shall have to do something. <sighs> Perhaps I'll stay with you after all. Uh, we're quite comfortable as we are. I can see no reason why we should change our life for something that might never happen. Drink, Drusilla. No, thank you. No, I'm going to the pub. Give nothing away. Drink, John. Uh, sorry. Escort duty. No, I'd rather go alone. It's all in the oven. I'll wait till we get back. Good to see Charles Rose again. Hasn't changed a bit. Oh, put on a few pounds, then <laughs> haven't we all? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've kept your figure remarkably well, if I may say so. I don't know. You know odd spot of PT, riding, of course, and a round of golf when I can get it. Ah, you're a golfer. Oh, well, sadly out of practice. I spent too long in the wrong places. You know, you must talk to Freddie Peacock. He's on the committee of the club here. I say, Freddie, Lila, yeah. can you spare a moment? Oh, surely. Can I possibly introduce Colonel Travers, <laughs> Mrs. Peacock, How do you do? and her celebrated husband, who once did a hole in three. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? Colonel Travis is looking for a house around here. Well, after all, it is the prettiest spot in the Thames Valley. Oh, retiring? Oh, no, the army got rid of me years ago. Nothing to do now but enjoy myself. <laughs> Lucky chap. Wish I could say the same. Freddie has to go up to town every day on the stock exchange to fall to pieces. Oh, uh, you're on the change, are you? Investment consultant, actually. Oh, I must get your advice sometime. Ah, uh, you won't look at you under 20,000. Absolute nonsense. I'll rob anyone I can. Oh, well, I got a few piles of shekels hanging around doing nothing. <laughs> Care for a drink, sir? Oh, thank you very much. Oh, well, come What's your kind of voice? Uh, uh, whiskey. Oh, 
While I get you your drink, will you go to the ladies? Why? You should say, what for? And I say, for two minutes. <laughs> uh, gin and tonic and a scotch, please, Bessie. Right, sir. Good evening, Aubrey. Good evening, John. Chuck says, I don't know what to do with the rest of it, Dad. <laughs> I think we should be able to arrange a bit of mischief for you to get up to. Oh, I'm getting a bit old for mischief, oh, but uh, never <laughs> say die. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I'd really like some sort of job. Obviously, I don't want to get paid for it. I'd like to feel I was doing something in a good cause. Good evening, Colonel. Oh, good evening. You know some... Oh, forgive me, Colonel. Could I interrupt you for a moment? Well, certainly. A message from Mr. Rose. Uh, would you forgive me, please? Oh, of course. We'll see you later on. <laughs> Ah, now then, what's Charles got to say for himself? Well, I think it happens. You may or may not know, but I'm Charles's right-hand man. Yes, I get that, last night. You may or may not know that I was inside for two years. Really? For assault and battery. I assaulted and battered a chap I particularly disliked. Did you know? <laughs> you see, I have on occasions a terribly violent temper. Oh, my dear fellow, you're kidding. No. <laughs> Well, thank Charles for his message, would you? Actually, the message was for me. Yes, well, if you'll excuse me, I'll rejoin my friends. Oh, good evening, Miss Van. How nice to see you again. Leave it alone. I must talk to I'm him. I'm telling you, leave it alone. Rose here. Oh, Charles. Uh, Jeffrey Travels. I'm at the pub, why? Oh, your young couple have just left. What a charming pair they are. <laughs> Makes me feel quite young again just to look at them. What have you to say to me? Well, it's extraordinary the way everything happens at once, isn't it? I've been talking to some people here who are connected with the, with the golf club, <laughs> the Peacocks. You probably know them. Yes, they tell me the job of secretary is coming free shortly, and they suggested that I might apply for it. Well, obviously, the club will want references and what have you, so I thought of giving your name. Well, uh, secretary and treasurer, in point of fact. Yes, and treasurer. I wonder if you'd mind... Putting in a good word for you all. My dear chap, I'd be delighted. That's very kind of you. Not all. Anything I can do to help? Tell me, I could kick myself for not thinking of it before. I dare say it's quite comfortable down at the pub, but why don't you come and shack down with us here? in the guest room. After all, you are an old friend. I, uh, <coughs> threatened to bash his face in. Drusilla's father. I did it very politely. It won't have any effect. With considerable charm. Our techniques are different. I've invited him to stay. You've what? And he's accepted. So John, at noon tomorrow, will fetch him and his bags from the pub. Stay here, with us. What sort of technique is that? A well-known one in war. It's called... Uh, forgive me, Drusilla. Know your enemy. Well, of course, he wouldn't take no for an answer. I couldn't very well refuse an old friend. <laughs> of course not. Well, I'm sorry, Aubrey. I shall have to love you and leave you midday tomorrow. Oh, think nothing of it, sir. Glad to have had you. <laughs> I imagine Aubrey won't be entirely losing your customers. <laughs> oh, rather not. Brisk walk twice a day. <laughs> Help to keep me in trim. <laughs> well, I expect you'll be by yourself. Charles Rose doesn't come here very much. No, Charles keeps himself very much to himself. Mm. Yes, he was very much the same in the army. Splendid fellow when you get to know him, though. Solid work. Oh, I wouldn't dream of saying a word again. Against him, it's just that he isn't always the most sociable of mortals. Well, some of us are and some of us aren't, what? <laughs> <laughs> you uh, knew him in the army, did you? Yes, sir, to go. <laughs> I thought Charles was in a uh, special investigation branch. Oh, no, I was cavalry, not quite the same thing. No, but he was attached to me in more ways than one. <laughs> you know, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, into Sicily, up through Italy. <laughs> yes, yes. Captain Gerald Lacey Edgeworth was cashiered in September 1937, which is the last the army ever heard of him. Yes. He's shown in his records as unmarried. Yes. 
If this next bit's going to be embarrassing, so? I'll lay the table for dinner. There's nothing embarrassing. Drusilla, your name is Lamb. Oh, he married my mother in 1938 under the name of George Lamb. Captain Lamb, on leave from the King's African Rifles. They went on a long honeymoon, and then one day, he just wasn't there. Ah. I was brought up to believe that Daddy had met a hero's death, fighting for king and country. It wasn't until afterwards I found out that he'd disappeared with half my mother's money. Afterwards? After my mother died. I was 17, and he just turned up out of the blue. Looking for more money? Yes. Did he get in it? Some. Well, of course, my one regret was that I never had any children. Because I had this tragic marriage, oh, years ago. Poor little woman faded away in front of my eyes. Lungs, you know. TV. Oh, yes, galloping. How terrible. Nothing could be done about it. Tried everything, Switzerland, the finest specialist in the world. But nothing, nothing at all. Oh, you poor man. Oh, it's too tragic to think about, really it is. Good heavens, half past eight. I wonder if you good people would care to dine with me. Oh, we can. No. Thank <laughs> you. Dinner, such as it is, is served. Look, don't start thinking it's another piece of fraud, his being my father. He really is. And he can prove it. He's got the marriage certificate and letters, and photographs of the wedding day. Yes, I imagined he would have. Oh, I've seen them. He carries them around with him, ready to show. Which is another reason why John is going to collect him and bring him here. Him and his bags. Good morning, Charles. Welcome to Diabolical Liberty Hall. Huh? <laughs> good joke. Oh, I'm full of good jokes. Shall I take the Colonel's bags up to the guest room, sir? Yes, do, John. Would you care to see your room now, or wait till you've had a sniff down? Oh, well, sniffed her first, I think. <laughs> uh, carry on, Jeeves. This way for the snifter. Uh, would you like me to unpack for you, sir? No, no, no. Old campaigner can manage for myself. <laughs> As you please, sir. Oh, well, on second thought, it's years since I've had a Batman to lay me kit out for me. Yeah, catch. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Ah, oh, sniff towards. Useful chap you have there. Had him long? I should mention, and I do realize that it's become second nature to you, but you don't have to do the old campaigner stuff with John. He knows what your campaigns were, as well as I do. Yes, I gathered that last night in the pub. But his veiled threats were not meant to be taken seriously unless the situation becomes serious, in which case they are. You know, there's one good thing about me. I don't frighten easy. Yes, I know. Water? Uh, no, straight. Water for me. Assault and battery, is it? Yes. Ah, don't believe it. Cheers. Cheers. Why not? Oh, well, I've seen them all. Seven years in the jug. Yes, not to mention one or two earlier spells. Uh, no, no, two, to be precise. Yes. No, a burglar, I'd say, by the look of him. Oh, would you? Uh, oh, by the way, I should mention, uh, by the, nothing to do with anything at all. Oh, do go on. If anyone has the notion of stealing anything I have that might prove that I'm Drusilla's father, but why on earth should anybody have such a notion? I don't carry them around with me anymore. They're in a safe deposit box in London. Uh, under an assumed name, of course. Of course. Trust me to take care of myself. I do. Where are they? Lunch. You've missed the soup. And you? I'm just the waiter, discreet and deaf. I can't go in. Hold this dish a moment, would you? What was that for? Cheek is for sympathy, mouth is for admiration. Madam. Because I must say, I've been very successful in my career. Uh, rather like you in yours. Mine was more harmless. I made more money. And took more consequences. Oh, well, it goes without saying. Rough with the smooth. <laughs> Ah, Priscilla, my dear. I'm going to see you. Thank you. Soup for you, madam? No, thank you. Cold salmon and salad. Don't bother, John. We'll serve ourselves. I thought you might want me to hand things round, sir, and meanwhile take mental notes of the conversation. I don't think so. 
Thank you, sir. Sir, Mr. Sir. Please. Now, darling, I was just saying Charles has made rather a muck of things, hasn't he? How do you mean? Well, if he'd denounced me right away, I could have understood. You know, this man's a crook. <laughs> no skin off my nose, and I've just moved on. Having denounced me? Well, having quite naturally told people that you were my daughter. No harm in that. After all, it is the truth. It's true, but it's harm. Oh, well, getting me on back. Slim basis for an operation, I agree. Very slim. Why did you try it? I had a feeling it was more between you and Charles than met the eye. What? Well, from things you said, I had a feeling you wouldn't want to leave. He wouldn't want you to leave. You'd insist, he'd refuse. Tears, arm round the waist. Spare the poor gal's feelings. A little wine, Drusilla? No, thank you. More wine, Geoffrey, if I may call you Geoffrey. Oh, thank you so much. It's one of the better Montrachets. Oh, God. Now you've rather let yourself in for it, haven't you? I mean, backing me for the golf club, inviting me to your house. Difficult to do anything about me now. Practically impossible. Unless I leave. Well, if you leave or not. I mean, why should the great and good ex-Chief Inspector Rose harbour a criminal? A notorious criminal. But my dear Geoffrey, I'm sure you'd make a most efficient secretary of the golf club. Mm -hmm. No, secretary and treasurer. I'm going to get I said and treasurer. I'm convinced this time you are not going to meddle with the funds. No, and why are you convinced? Your own statement, you told me. You're going to tread the straight and narrow. And since when have you ever believed a word I've said? I believe you now. Why? You're too old for it, you're like me. You've retired. Yes, you're right. I do hope. We all hope. I'm convinced. I would, I were. I'm sorry. I can't eat any more. Would you excuse me? Jeffrey. Why are you trying to persuade me that you will probably do something criminal? Oh, probably is too strong. Uh, possibly. Well, interesting as a possibility, isn't it? I mean, now that you've endorsed man. Straight and narrow. I swear it. The other's just a permanent possibility. You do realize, of course, why I endorsed you. No, tell me. It's simply that I wanted to make sure what you were really up to. Oh, clever, Mr. Rose. You're not interested in denouncing or being denounced. No profit in it. Exactly. You're only interested in making money by staying or making money by leaving. You know, one must admire. Lose it. Damn lose it. Question. Is it more profitable to stay or to leave? Well, that depends, doesn't it? On factors. And no, on people. I've always worked on people. Great amateur psychologist. I wonder if I could have some more of that delicious wine. Please do. <clears throat> Of course, I always knew you wouldn't denounce me because of Drusilla. I knew something like this would happen. Clever Colonel Travers. <laughs> and every day that goes by makes it more difficult for you, doesn't it? I mean, for instance, suppose I get this job at the secretary of the golf club, and it seems highly probable. Well, you're quite right. I should be extremely efficient, especially with the accounts. And suppose some widow, spinster or virgin wished to be endow me with all her worldly goods. Well, of course, I'd play it straight. Then what would you do? I mean, you couldn't suddenly say, that man's a crook. What would you look like? You go out of your mind watching me all the time. If I, in case I strayed from the straight and narrow. Have you any solution to offer to my problem? Yes, well, Drusilla's always wanted me to go to Australia. Never been there. I mean, I shouldn't mind going. Botany Bay all over again. <laughs> of course, someone would have to pay my passage. That would be a solution. And uh, should I decide to stay there, set me up in a sheep farm or something similar? You know, some rich philanthropist who believes in his fellow men. I take the point. <laughs> well, uh, would you excuse me while I punch you? And you can think things over. John, has Drusilla any filial affection? for that monster in man's clothing. I've just been talking to her about that. The correct answer is none, not any longer. So, if he wants to play dirty, I shall play dirty too. You mean I can... Oh, um... no. Much dirtier than that. One whiskey. Oh, great. One pepper. Thanks very much. Cheers. I must say, Charles has been extraordinarily decent. 
He even placed his car at my disposal. Oh, <laughs> you know, just like the old days, commanding officer <laughs> with the own barouche and driver, <laughs> doing a tour of inspection and all that sort of thing. You found what you wanted yet? Well, I'm not sure, really. I'm not told sure. I had a look at Pendlebury Court. Oh, very attractive property. Yes, yes, with no grounds, only about three acres. Still no hurry. Charles doesn't seem to mind how long I stay with him. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. May I take your hat, sir? And your stick? Your coat, sir? Thank you. Ah, uh, would you go through into the study, please, gentlemen? Mr. Rose is waiting for you there. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. May I take your hat, sir? And your coat, sir? Thank you, and your hat, sir. Uh, would you go through into the study, please, gentlemen? Mr. Rose is waiting for you there. Well, of course, my great worry is the old tub. Oh. I really must get onto that golf course. Ah, but you know, Charles won't let me lift a finger for myself. Why, wouldn't even let me walk here tonight. Oh. Driver to bring me here, picking me up again at half past eight. I mean, it's quite ridiculous. Gentlemen, we have an hour to get through the agenda, which should, I think, be ample. But let me start first by formally welcoming you, Mr. Wharton, Mr. Pierce, Mr. Chapman and Mr. Rennie. And let me apologize for bringing some of you so far, but I did think this was the most convenient meeting point. Now, I give each one of you a brief resume of the situation on the telephone I'll go into detail later. But first, let me say that I felt some slight hesitation at pressing the claims of old friendship. And consequently, I was delighted, more than delighted, to find that each of you felt about the situation exactly as I do. And as a result, I have here tonight, around this table, the most talented, the most respected, and the most successful set of villains ever to be assembled under one roof. to his description of you. Oh. No one could. Not even Mary Pickford in her prime. The um, wide-eyed virgin, her fair name threatened by a black-hearted scoundrel. As it happens. You are wide-eyed, yes, I know. And he's black-hearted, all right. Listen, you won't mind what happens to him. Only it's using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. <laughs> For that nut, you need a sledgehammer. Well, what is going to happen? Am I allowed to know? Move one and the operation is time to start when I say... Now. Of course, life can be very difficult for a man living on his own. Oh, not that I can't take care of myself. Been doing it for years. More years than I care to remember. But I don't know. It's the loneliness that catches up with yours, isn't it? Oh, gin, please. Yes. Oh, friends, yes. Many friends, some of the best friends in the world. But once you've known the true value of a woman's friendship, well, I did tell you about my tragedy. Yes, yes. well, he doesn't bear speaking Thank about it, honestly. Oh, and boy, terribly sorry, old boy. Uh, well, that's perfectly Very right. clumsy of me. No, 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 Still, no. these things do happen, don't they? Yes, 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 yes. No Some harm done in it. No, 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 steady hand, eh? Good show. Now, as I was saying, you must know from your own experience, my boy. But what's the point of that? Useful information. Like where his safety deposit is, under what name? But that might not be in his diary. But it might be. But if it's not, 
Then we'll have to lift his wallet, won't we? Anything you lift, he is going to miss. Not necessarily. I'll tell you what I very much enjoy. That is, if you'd agree. Well, let's look at it this way. You need cheering up and so do I. So why don't we have dinner together? Oh, lovely. I yeah. like this. Well, I don't mean here, but, you know, somewhere on the river. Oh, how nice. Thank you. Come on. Bye, sir. Well, as a matter of fact, Freddie Peacock was giving me the name of a place. I did make a note of it. I... What the devil? <laughs> here it is. Now, let's see. Where did I put it down? But if you find out about his safe deposit, what you do then? Burgle it. Very difficult to get things out of safe deposit. That is what I thought. It's much easier and just as effective to put things in. What do you mean? Given, of course, that one has a letter of authorization with a proper signature. But he's not going to fall. Or a reasonable facsimile thereof. Oh. Ah. All we want from him are some samples of his handwriting. By the way, have you thought any more about buying me that sheep farm? How much does a sheep farm cost these days? Well, it depends on the size. Yes, well, I was thinking of something fairly modest. Say 5,000 sheep? Oh, I might not be able to manage 5,000. Well, hardly worth my while to go for under 5,000. Then I shall just have to do my best. Uh, five? My dear chap, give me time. <laughs> no hurry at all, as far as I'm concerned. Good. Living on the fat of the land. Uh, by the way, did I tell you that that golf club job looks like coming through? Oh, and uh, you'd be pleased to hear that I've taken up with a rich widow. Yes, I had heard. Uh, Mrs. Dewing. Just my type. Oh, do carry on enjoying yourself. Make full use of us, John Drusilla. If you want errands run or letters typed for your signature. Good morning, sir. Morning. Colonel Humphreys asked me to pop this into you. It's for putting in his safe deposit box. Oh, I'm not sure we can allow... Oh, I have a letter of authorization signed by the Colonel. Oh, very well, sir. Ah, thank you, Chapman. So far, so good. I look forward to hearing. Yes, of course, I'm sure it will. Whenever have you failed in the past? Oh, and would you ask Wharton to telephone me? I have a rush job for him. In fact, I think I can get in tonight's post. Right. Bye. The safe deposit box is ready for the big event. When will it happen? Midnight tonight. Onward, Christian soldiers marching us to war. Next move. Uh, Drusilla, take a letter, please. Ready. Our own notepaper, see oblique in front of the address, today's date. Dear Peacock. No, that doesn't sound right. Dear Freddy. And now. We must catch the full fake military flavor. Morning, Aubrey. Good morning. Good morning, Bessie. Excuse me, morning, Colonel. Oh, the usual, please. Yes. Usual. Good morning. Good morning, Captain. <laughs> what? I say good morning, Captain Edward. Here you wish you were. Oh, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> nice picture. Yes. yes. Well, the best picture I've seen for years was you walking down the street yesterday. Oh? Yeah? Yes, I thought it was too good to miss. You, uh... You do remember me, don't you? No. Oh, it's funny, I would have known you anywhere. Inside or out. What do you want? Depends on what you're up to. Nothing. Oh. Better than uh, sewing mailbags. <laughs> oh, my dear lady. Now, please excuse me for a minute. I'm just talking a little business. Uh, Bessie, would you give Mrs. Dewing whatever she requires? 
This is uh, doing. Um, to your new one. All right. What's it worth? Oh, say a thousand. What? To start with. <laughs> but my dear Geoffrey, you told me there was no hurry. Your very words, I remember them clearly. No hurry so far as I am concerned. You want me to go? All right, I'll go. Anything to oblige. Give me the money and I'll go. Five thousand sheep. In cash. Difficult. Oh, come now. I know what you're worth. But I don't know what you're worth. Perhaps nothing. Uh, just one comment. Think of Drusilla. I think of no one else. Right then. I'll make you a sporting offer. I don't want a sporting offer. Nevertheless, I'll make it. Go to Australia or any country in the world outside this one, pay your own passage. Buy a sheep farm or whatever you like with your own money and never come back. And what's your side of the bargain? I solemnly promise never to speak ill of you in public ever again. You call that a bargain? I didn't. I called it an offer. You must be out of your mind. But I beg you to consider it and accept. Five thousand tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a very good day for settling accounts. Bread and cheese at night. You'll have bad dreams. I have them already. Listen. He swindled your mother. He deserted her. He broke her heart. What more do you want? And I'm his daughter. No, you're not. You're mine. Or something of the sort. Ah, good morning, Geoffrey. Good morning, Charles. Well, today is the day. Ah, it is indeed. Settling there, army, or else. I do understand the situation. Good. Oh, by the way, Freddie Peacock telephoned you from the pub. Oh, about that golf club job. Yes, could you spare him a moment in the pub, say, at 12? I certainly. Uh, he seemed rather peeved by some letter you'd written him. Letter? What letter? Yeah, but do hurry up and hurry back, because it's a celebration lunch. You see for yourself. Black and white, is that your signature or isn't it? All I'm saying is you might have let me know a bit sooner. It's been a damn fool pushing you as my candidate for the job. And then out of the blue, without a word of warning, sorry, can't do it, going off to Australia. Yes, but... You I... might at least have apologised. Look, were you drunk when you wrote it? Hello, no, but... good morning. <laughs> no, I was stone-cold sober. Where's Rose? What are you doing with my bags? Mr. Rose's orders, sir. Where is he? Ah, Geoffrey. Just in time for the celebration. Forgery? What on earth do you mean? You've got a forger working for you. Have I? Yes. And I suppose that blackmailer works for you as well. All right, if that's the way you want it, I'll go. But I'll go with the money or else. Or else what? You know what. Or else I'll tell about Drusilla. That reminds me. Someone you simply must meet. The reason for our celebration, George. The champagne should just be about ready. Let me introduce you. Colonel Travers, George Lamb. Captain Lamb. Late King's African Rifle. What? How do you do? Lucilla's father. Long lost, now happily restored to us after all these years. No. Actually, Truth yes. Is stranger than fiction. Now, look here. I telephoned everybody in the neighborhood, simply everybody inviting them to a party to meet him. He is not Lucilla's father. I can prove it. Oh, forgeries. Uh, the very best forgeries. Yes, but I have proofs as well, the real thing, better than those, and somewhere where you can't get them. Yes, I think perhaps I should mention that the contents of your safe deposit, which you have under the name of Colonel Humphrey... How did you know that? I have more than one thing. The contents of your safety deposit box, marriage certificate, letters, wedding photographs, were reduced to ashes by an incendiary bomb at midnight last night. You're lying! For once, I'm telling the truth. All burnt, all gone, forever. How do you know? I have second sight. Drusilla, I am your father. Not any longer. Excuse me, Colonel Travers. Your taxi is waiting. Taxi? What taxi? I didn't order a taxi. I put your bags in already, sir. Yes, but I've no intention of going. Hey, you'll have to worry, or you'll miss the train.
John, would you serve the champagne? 